Hello and welcome to a brand new synth soundset walkthrough with me, Matthew Bowdler Esquire, also known as The Unfinished. Uh, today we're back with Zebra. Um, it's been a little while, but not that long. Uh, but I do love it, so I can't keep away. So what are we looking at here? This is a brand new soundset called Minima. Now this soundset is all about um, simple rhythmic sounds. So pretty much everything is either in quarter, eighth or sixteenth note format. So um, it's all 4-4. Four, four. No weird time signatures, no strange rhythms or syncopation. It's all really plain stuff, which is something that um, people have been asking me to do for a while when just needing a very simple rhythmic line underneath the rest of their writing. They wanted a sound set that they can just duck into, get lots of sounds, test lots of sounds in that vibe, and Bob's your uncle, not having to sift through things that they know that won't work. Um, so here it is, this is Zebra Minima, and it's got 180 patches in the basic version for Zebra 2. Uh, and there's obviously going to be a dark edition with those 180 patches reimagined for the Dark Zebra. And there's also going to be a deluxe version this time around, which I'll tell you a bit more about later on. But let's start by just ducking straight into some noises. Uh, we're going to go with the very first patch, which is an up. So there's a real mix of um, organic and electronic sounds in here. This is obviously more of an organic sound. There's some interesting things on the mod wheel. And this whole sound set is very much designed at sort of, these are supporting sounds. They're not stuff that's supposed to be up at the front. They're supporting sort of orchestral strings and piano and that kind of thing. Um, it's very underscorey, fairly low key. There's not a lot in here that's completely in your face or anything like that. It's all, like I say, it's all, it's all going for the best support actor Oscar rather than the actual best actor actor uh, Oscar. Let's try the mod wheel on this one for some fun. sounds quite interesting and just adding in little subtle bits of movement so it's not all completely static. And there's a mixture of light and dark stuff. you know because it's all it's, uh, quarter eighth and sixteenth notes you can just come in here and just change it and you've got change the pace of it basically depending on what your cue needs I 
mean, this isn't particularly inspired by any particular scores this time around. It's really more, I mean, it's come out of a bunch of bespoke work that I've done. So there's sounds in here that are created for a couple of BBC TV dramas. And there's also one for a game score that I worked on. So obviously the sounds are very flexible and you can use them for, they don't sort of, they're not designed particularly for any genre specifically. But where they probably do work best is that sort of um, modern orchestral underscorey type music. So here in the UK, we have a, a number of good shows in that vein, like um, uh, like detective dramas like Hinterland and uh, Shetland, and that kind of thing. But there's enough electronic stuff in here that you can also do a kind of Mr. Robot style score as well. It's designed to be like a, just a really useful sort of underscore drama toolbox. Where when you know you need a, a steady rhythmic pulse or bass line or sequence or drum loop, you can dig into minima and you know you're going to have a, a selection. Now what we also do have as well as the the tempo sync, sync stuff that's the core of this. I have put in a few uh, basic bass lines and pads and uh, a couple of other instruments, um, just as extra supportive stuff. And they're all quite simple again. So nice patches that um, are not too intrusive, basically. So a nice deep filtered style bass there. Now you've got a nice punchy analog bass. Uh, we've got a handful of little um, drum sounds. Add a teeny weeny bit of extra drama if you need it. Little impacts. And we've got some keys. Um, these are basically just electric piano sounds, which I thought I'd add in for those little melodic moments. And there's even fewer leads, <laughs> just a couple of leads that fit into this project. This one's a, well, as you can see on the screen, it's a guitar psichord. And then we're into one of the bigger sections, which is the loops. Um, so a variety of different types of drum sound in here, but again, they're all quarter, eighth, sixteenth notes, patterns. So we've got top lines like this one. And we've got some more organic stuff. And don't forget, you can also play these as arps, not just uh, holding down one note. So some of them do have some melodic qualities to them. And then some really sort of simple, clicky, ticky stuff like this that um, 
again, it's just for creating that sort of rhythm that drives things forward. And some little sort of analog noise loops. And we've got some bass stuff as well, some, some deep kicks. And there's a good mix of atmospheric stuff and also quite sort of tight, um, non-vibey stuff as well. So there's a, there's a really good range. I'm skipping through these a little quickly today because we've got a dark edition plus some bonus patches to go through and I don't want to take forever and ever and ever. We're all busy people, right? Now there are also um, quite a few pads in here. Just um, th These are very much sort of really simple pads, almost um, sort of bed style pads. So very simple sort of um, analog and digital synth pads. Not very much movement or uh, evolving dynamics in any of them. Really just some sounds that I've kind of liked, the kind of thing I've heard in some TV dramas, and I thought... And even the Cynthia ones, I've tried to imbue a slight sort of organic quality in them, so kind of helps keep them in the background as it were.
a little bit Oliver Arnold there. And partly there's this many pads in this sound set because I just love making pads. some nice glassy pads in here. Okay, we've got a handful of soundscapes. Again, these are designed to be quite sort of simple. Unlike the soundscapes uh, in most of my other uh, sound sets, like, there's not a lot of movement, there's not not a huge amount of that sort of darkness that I tend to imbue into them. These are very just sort of very very basic simple scene setters. And this is probably the one that does the most movement and there's not a lot going on. And then we're on to the sequences. So again, it's it's quarter, eighth, sixteenth note stuff. Um, there's probably more organic and sort of noisy, distorted stuff in this section. So not particularly synthy. And some of it, like this one's even quite sort of rhythmic and percussive. Do the module doesn't this one we haven't played with the module much, have we? Nice little uh, filtering down. So nice and organic and punchy. Uh, let's see what that bass growl on the module is like. More of a sort of noise. So this section is not, not too vanilla. We're going through all the most percussive patches on this, I can see. Sometimes that's just the way the cookie crumbles. This is quite nice because it's got a, a ticky thing going on, but there's a nice subtle synth underneath. Let's try the module. really is one of those patches where you just hold the note down and it does it all for you. And sometimes that's what you need. <laughs> Something a little unusual to 
finish with. Okay, so that, that's the very sort of basic version. That's the um, Zebra 2 version. So let's go and have a little look at um, Old Dark Zebra. Uh, we'll whiz through these a little bit quicker, I think, otherwise we're going to be here forever. So obviously this takes the original sounds and basically runs them through Dark Zebra and gives them a grittier, darker, more analog edge. But the principles are still the same, it's still all the, the nice simple rhythms for underscore and supporting your cues, etc. the original version sound like? Let's see if I can get this. What? <laughs> That's quite the departure. I don't normally go that crazy with the, the dark ones, but there you go. So nice and punchy. aggressive with the Dark Zebra ones, which sometimes is something I like to do. If you've enjoyed the the last sound set I did for Zebra Nordsund, you'll know quite how dark it can get. Okay, let's just play through. I'll do a bit less talking because I've kind of described everything really. There's definitely a flavour of more sort of unusual sounds going on here. So the dark edition is very much darker, <laughs> which it's supposed to be. Bases. Quite interesting when you haven't listened to some sounds for in a while. Find out exactly what you've done. All of the dark keys, like, I wonder. Oh, this is a kind of wind organ sound. Let me get to hear this sound. Oh yes, I quite like this one. Although the dark version is a little bit more Cynthia. Cynthia? Who's Cynthia? Let's whiz through the drums. I 
pretty comfortable with this. I did my I did my demo track using normal zebra, and so I got quite familiar with those sounds. But I haven't listened to some of these for a little while. So I'm genuinely <laughs> a little surprised at how out there some of them are. Sort of stuff, so it's all good, Governor. Okay, some dark pads. No module on this one, this is just me holding down this note. Nineties kind of Mike Post vibe to it. Then. Nice and simple, not one of those terrorizing sounds that I'm more commonly doing with soundscapes. They can behave sometimes. Okay, I haven't behaved with this one. <laughs> Thank you. 
fun. I, I'm gonna have to, aren't I? I'm gonna have to check what, what that what's like. Is it in secrecy? This is gritty glass. Okay, I was expecting that to be a bit more vanilla than it than it was, because <laughs> that this dark zebra version sounded so crazy. So that's gonna be one of those ones where I just went mental and went in a completely different direction. But the original was kind of fun too. So there's a very gritty vibe to these sequences here. Easy atonal stuff coming in. So obviously the dark edition is very much the place you want to go if you're thinking I want a noisier patch for this sequence. So if the normal zebra version you go, mm, this is not quite dark enough. The dark edition is there waiting for you. Waiting to tempt you into its world of doom. Okay, what I'm going to very quickly show you now to finish off is the bonus section. So Minima is 180 patches, but there's a bonus ethnic um, collection if you buy the deluxe version. So you get 50 extra patches in the normal Zebra version, and that's obviously another 100. That's 100 extra patches in the dark edition, the dark Deluxe edition. You'll you'll understand eventually. We'll, we'll discuss it again at the end. So we've got um, basically this section is all about um, physically modelled hand drum loops, and there's also some uh, sort of mallet things in there, bells and gamelans, that kind of thing. So like this. I'll play another one because otherwise I'm not going to hear very much. Okay, so we're going to do that one. Right, so we go through the loops. Um, so these, there's a, lot, there's a lot of similarity between these sounds uh, in, in the respect that they are designed to sound like sort of hat small tribal ethnic hand drums. But what's a little bit different about these is that I've, the project I made these for, I had to program um, some sort of human elements to them, so I had to sound like it was real drumming, not, um, it couldn't just be uh, just a repeated machine gun style dum 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 note, it had to sound like it was being played by hand. So hopefully that comes across. And it also means that with some of them, the timing's a little bit out there, which is quite nice. Well, I think it's quite nice anyway. Digging the sort of synthesized, physically modeled, 
ethnic vibes. You'll really enjoy this deluxe version of Brinsley's bonus patches. So again, it's a good collection if you want some ethnic percussion, but you want to use something that's a little, just has a slight avant-garde texture to it, so that you know it's not. You don't want the real thing, <laughs> but at the same time, you still want it to sound ethnic. So we've got a couple of mallets here. This one's quite fun because it's a unchewed sort of original version of it too. And then we've got some little tonal, synthy, organic, <laughs> percussive bits. It sounds like it's percussion, but in, in reality, we start playing an arp with it, for example. Got a very tonal element to So it's a little bonus section. Um, if it appeals to you, you can go for it. And uh, I'll just show the dark version as well. Um, through this. Ooh, we've gone off on one with this one. So there will be some in the dark section that no longer sound particularly like <laughs> genuine ethnic drums because I'll have just gone, ooh, let's do it a bit different. Some do, but and there's very much a sort of lo-fi edge to these ones where where with Zebra 2 I suppose it sounds like the drums have been nicely recorded and with uh, Dark Zebra it sounds like they've been not nicely recorded <laughs> knackered old tape machines I think you'll agree these are some very useful sounds. When you just want some nice driving rhythms, actually, what can be really nice in this section is when you layer up a load of them. Because there are these little, little, little timing issues, it really sounds like a, a, a fantastic ensemble. resonance to that one. So they are very much of a similar nature, you know, they are just supposed to be ethnic pan drums. But like I say, when you play them in sort of ensembles, you really get something. And also I think this is a sound that's actually quite prevalent in some modern scoring these days, which is quite cool. Analog mallet.
Okay, we'll finish with clock and spiel. And that's that. That's Zebra Minima. Um, so I hope that this walkthrough has been quite sort of explanatory of what the whole the idea and the vibe is. It's quite, um, I suppose it's quite an ideological sound set, this one, whereas normally I'm inspired by particular uh, types of sort of genres of sound or a collection of different film TV scores. This one's a little more practical than that. There's There's a core idea of having these quarter, eighth and sixteenth notes stuff that you just drop in to provide rhythm basically and if you're not looking if you're looking for a plain rhythm just to set the tempo underneath just to get the dum 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 going along underneath whatever you're else you're writing it's a nice little sort of toolbox of those kind of sounds to to just drop in there and um plus I've thrown in a few other bits and pieces that are probably useful <laughs> The pads and the bases. Um, I must admit, I do love this new uh, .8 GUI for Zebra, which if you just sort of right click up here, you can select it rather than the original version. It's very clear, very simple to get to, to quickly see where everything is. So if you're one of these people that does find uh, Zebra a little bit overwhelming, I really do recommend this, this GUI because I think it's actually a work of genius. There's a few... Um, commercial sort of third-party GUIs for Zebra that have come out recently. Uh, I don't know whether people thought the, sort of the original version looks a little long in the tooth. I mean, it does a little bit, you know, bless it. It does make, makes like Dark Zebra. I hope they're going to do a dot eight for Dark Zebra, actually. That'd be quite cool. Because um, it does make it look a bit old-fashioned almost, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, it's really, really nice. I mean, you've got access to seeing the, the oscillators much more clearly. The ARP section maybe gets a, takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is actually quite, again, it's very pleasing on the eye. I mean, the matrix is, is quite nice now. You really see the controls you're putting together more clearly. And the XY stuff is, is, is prettier but it's, it's essentially the, the same, really. But yes, I do think it looks very nice. And obviously in the presets, you can see more presets at one go, and this section's a little easier to see. And then you've got the, the information up here, which is quite nice. But generally, it just looks nicer and just feels easier to use. So I'm quite a big fan of it. Oh, and whilst we're here... Um, there's a load of XY pad stuff done on all the all the patches as per usual. So not just the mod wheel, but you've got funny things here to play with to really sort of manipulate the sounds and take them in interesting and occasionally quite weird different directions. So that's Zebra Minima. Um, there are four versions of it, <laughs> which I'm hoping is not going to be too confusing. But you've got, as with every... Um, Zebra release. I do. There's a normal version and there's a dark edition. The dark edition does always include the normal version, so never buy more than one version of one of my Zebra sound sets. Used to have a bit of a problem with that at the beginning, but I think I've made it more clear now, and it's very rare that anyone buys both by mistake. Um, yes. So there's the Zebra. So there's Zebra Minima. The Zebra Minima Dark Edition, and then there's deluxe editions of both, which includes the the bonus ethnic patches that we've just been playing with. So there's Zebra Minima Deluxe and Zebra Minima Dark Edition Deluxe. Um, so you just choose whichever one you want. I mean, obviously, the Zebra Dark Edition Deluxe gives you everything. That's a total of 460 patches, whereas with um, the basic Zebra 2 version, you just get 180. Well, I say just 180. 180 is quite a lot of patches. But yes, if you buy the Deluxe Dark Edition, you get 460 patches. That's quite nice to be playing with, I think. Okie dokie then. Well, thank you very much for um, sticking around with this walkthrough. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the sounds that you've heard and you like the concept of Zebra Minima. Um, I think it's going to be a really useful sound set for everyone to use. Um, it's a nice little toolbox of sounds. And... 
Yes, so thanks again, and I'll be back with you with some interesting stuff very soon. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>